Nice. Okay, we're live. Hello, hello, everyone. My name is Alex uh, Salnikov. I'm one of the co-founders at Rarible, and I'm chief strategy officer and lead product. Earlier, there has been uh, my colleague, Evgeny Kot, uh, he, giving a talk if you have been here for a while and you heard that. So we're going to speak about more or less uh, close uh, related topics and his topic was more technical and I would actually prefer them to go the other way around so uh, if you if you want you can get back and listen to that after maybe that will have another another context for you so this is more like motivational part why why is it done why are we building this and in general why we are excited about NFTs I know NFTs are not the 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 topic today on everyone's radar, but it's, it's great. So um, the topic is called the future of experiences, on-chain experiences through NFTs. Hello, hello. Thank you for listening to me in this early hour. OK, just a second. I'm just going to scroll. I'm not sure why it doesn't work. All right. NFTs are back. Way back, baby. Woo! I know, I know it's been hard. Since pretty much 2021, NFTs been only down, all the way down. And I think one of the lowest points was actually like August and, and September and October last year. Since then, we've been up. The NFTs are doing $50 million of daily volume. And the lowest point was like 10, so we're 5 X from the bottom, and I'm so glad it's feeling nice. NFTs are back. While I have your attention here, um, if you would have just like one thought from this talk, just, just one thought that you'll remember, I want you to remember this. So the thought is that if you'll take a comprehensive look at the, at the, at the crypto market, at the Web3 market, then consumer part of that, there is really nothing else but NFTs. So that's just the one thought that you wa I want you to remember. Um, let's take a look at the general like Web2 market. If we're talking about trading, then Robinhood is pretty much our ceiling. It's 10, 20 million users in US that trade stocks in a retail fashion. That's, that's the ceiling for the trading market. They have a lot of money, that's great. They have a lot of volume, that's great. But that's not a lot of users. If we take a look at the, what, what people do, we have socials, that's probably the biggest one, right? Billions of users. Uh, we have Amazon, 200, 250 million users in US alone. They want to buy stuff, they don't want to trade, they just want to spend money. People come, how many people listen to the Netflix shows? Okay, 150 million in US, half of the population. So. 10 to 20 million trade. That's, that's really the, the thesis for, for NFTs in general. We hit ceiling with, with everything in 2021 when all these people that wanted to experience things came to the NFT world, they started minting art, they started playing games, and they're like, okay, it feels like the internet, but I'm clicking buttons and I'm paying $100 in gas fees for every action. That's, that doesn't feel like a good experience. That is actually a bad experience. So today we are going to talk about the good experiences with NFTs that start to pop off. OK. Bear market. Again, it's a sad time. No funding. Layoffs. Ooh. Uh, NFTs are going down. But builders are building. Shout out to everyone who was building through the bear market. Shout out to chains. Shout out to token balance accounts. Shout out to games. Shout out to everyone who kept their heads down and been building. We are in the bull run. That feels good. Bitcoin is at 60,000. Ethereum is 3,500. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Uh, now all all the things that you've been building through the bear market will come true. It will pay off. You'll raise funding rounds. You'll enjoy the run. 
And then we're going to go to another bull run, and then we're going to go to another bear market. But every time the infrastructure grows, the evolution happens, all the things get better. OK, so infrastructure. I don't know if you remember these times, and maybe some of you actually dipped a bit into these times with the ordinals that just appeared. But if you send a Bitcoin transaction, what you do next is you, you go away from your laptop and you take a coffee and you're like, yeah, I'll wait when it processed. You get back in 10 minutes, it's still not there. You're like, okay. You go walk around, then it's done. Uh, 20 minutes is the average uh, confirmation time if you didn't mess up with fees on Bitcoin. If you did, uh, maybe more sometimes, there is no block on Bitcoin for an hour. Can you imagine that? No transaction get processed in one hour. We started there 15 years ago, 14 years ago, and since then we came the long, long way. So now Ethereum. Ethereum average transaction confirmation time to the user, like when you, when, uh, the block time is 1.5 seconds. But your transaction doesn't always go to the first block. And sometimes you like, estimated fees wrongly. In general, if you make an Ethereum transaction, you wait seconds, 10, 20 seconds. Uh, we've experienced that with Variable. We've built an amazing interface very early that gives you a feedback that, OK, your transaction is coming, hand-holding, now, 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 now. It's done. You can use your NFT. Maybe there is some pending uh, status for that. Now, it's still not there yet. For now, it's absolutely clear that technologically and just from all the standpoints, economically, it is feasible to have blockchains that are them near instant. It wasn't, it wasn't me who came up with this name, but I love it. Uh, our design team, shout out to them. So them near instant. Uh, and that's what gives you a good experience as a user. You want to click a button. And you want to receive an instant feedback that something happened. OK, like in the, in the internet. If you watch a show, if you watch a movie, you click buttons, you do socials, it happens automatically. It happens instantly. And there is no limitation to that altogether at this point. So this is when we are going to see all the things that were, in, were in, introduced with NFTs will we'll come back and will be experienced by users in a good way. Now, I'm going to talk to you about the experiences themselves. And that's going to be very personal. So the next several slides are the experiences that me personally, I felt as a good experience as a user, as a, in the user's shoes. When, when I used something, and I was like, yes, that clicks. Initially, when we were creating wearable, we came to, to the space and uh, what, what prompted us to start the company was, was our experience with NFTs. We created an NFT, we traded them back and forth inside the team, and we're like, yeah, that clicks, that feels nice. It gives me dopamine hit. I, I know that I'm, I'm going to do it. So uh, let's go. First one, experience. It's layer twos and layer threes. After using Ethereum, after having all these errors in MetaMask, I started using layer twos, layer threes. I click it, and it just works, and it damn feels good. It's just a good experience that I had as a user. And uh, one of the latest ones that, uh, that I had, it's uh, with Rarichain. Uh, it's a la layer tree on top of Arbitrum. It has something like 0 0.2 second confirmation time. You just click, and it shows you the green status. OK, transaction is confirmed. Good experience. Let's talk about more. Web3 Socials. That was another experience that I recently en was enjoying a lot. Frames, Farcaster. I don't know, raise your hands who are on for a caster right now. OK, not everyone. Uh, th that should be everyone, right? For a caster is great. It's a web social network. It's going to be very big. Um, it just introduced frames that allow you to attach actions to the on-chain social posts. Um, you can click buttons and mint an NFT, for example. Very simple. So a good experience. Uh, you can do viral campaigns. Uh, we just recently launched an open edition, and you needed to recast like a retweet post to be able to claim an open edition inside that same post. So what happened? 
it had 6,000 retweets. Just think about it. Consumers want to own a picture that much that they're ready to promote your viral post to 6,000. There was like huge coverage to just own a picture. So this, this is the experience, and this is something that we forget, that why people are in this space, because they love it, because they have good experience, they, get this dop they have this dopamine hit when they own something. Okay, next one. It's an NFT that can do something. All right, a friend pet, Tamagotchi, you can feed it, uh, it, can, it can eat, it can fight. It's something that CryptoKitties did back in the day, but that felt good. There's another example of that that was just launched today. Uh, peaches, crypto peaches. You can you can own a tree. You can own a tree. You can grow. Uh, you can fertilize that tree. You can grow peaches, and then the peaches get delivered to you. Experience, good experience. Okay, and obviously all all the games. I'm just not gonna talk about games. Go to the same stuff. Um, next one, talking about the speaker uh, before me was explaining that a lot, but. Again, it's an NFT that can own stuff. It can own stuff. If you remember, I don't know, you can, you can have a Barbie doll and you can attach different clothes on the Barbie doll or we work with Mattel. They want to use that to, to have a car and then you can like assemble this car. You can put different wheels on this car. You can race with that car in a game later. So that's a composable NFT and it gives you experience and the experience is to put things in a box, right? To organize things. It gives you a dopamine hit, it feels good. Okay, next one. Content NFT, music NFT, but actually just like wider than that. It's a content NFT. It's an NFT that you can listen to, it's an NFT that you can read, it's an NFT that, that can represent a podcast. There is an amazing app made by uh, a guy I know, it's called Surreal. It actually allows you to do all of that in the native mobile interface. So he's been pitching me, okay, I use this, I have NFT podcasts, and I listen to the NFT podcasts in my app, right? So I experience the content through NFTs. It's like Netflix, right? Okay, good. Good experience with the content. Next one. Uh, and this is actually the one that has been on everyone's radar, probably. And I think that this particular explains why we have trading infrastructure. So one would ask, okay, we have trading terminal, we have NFT lending, you can go, you can see a chart. It feels like a professional Bloomberg terminal. Why would we need the Bloomberg terminal for a picture? Okay, here's an answer because these pictures are turning into revenue generating IP ownership. And Lucanets and Pachi Pingus just showed us a good example of that. So they created a physical toys, they put these physical toys in the physical stores, they sold for $10 million and they distributed 10% royalties, 1 million, back to the NFT holder that was used, which, which NFTs was used to produce these toys and, as an IP. Okay, imagine Mickey Mouse as an NFT that you can license on chain. Story Protocol is doing that. Overpass IP is the platform where you can do that. That's nice. That's good experience that I had because it gave me meaning. Before that, I was almost struggling. Like, why do we need a trading infrastructure for a picture? Okay, that is why. It gave me meaning. It's great. Let's go. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually pretty much done. There is all sorts of different experiences that you can have with NFTs. Uh, as, you, as you see, they go to all sorts of directions. So it's not just, OK, we have a terminal. We have a marketplace. It is applications. It's platforms. It's physical. It's games. It's mobile. So they go to all of these directions. We have infrastructure that allows us to do it in a scalable way. We want to onboard the next 100 million users to the NFT this cycle. There is going to be a breakout app, and suddenly everyone would running around and throwing money at everybody who is building something with NFTs. Again, I, I promise you that, guys. Um, so build something. Pick a great experience that you like. Pick a chain that you like. There is a great experience with cross-chain. You can pay 
uh, you can pay for something uh, using the balance of another chain. I clearly see the vision uh, for the future where you just have one balance across all your L2s and it gets just used uh, whenever you want to buy something. This is, this is going to happen very soon. Thank you again for all who has been building. Um, we have something to help you, Rarible API, just product that we launched yesterday. Uh, it's a real-time indexer of all NFTs on all layer twos. If you want to build an app that will do something cool with NFTs on fast chains with the good experience, reach out to us. It's a fresh product. You will be the power user. We will listen to your feedback to incorporate that into that product. And uh, if if you align with the mission, you can even join the team to help with the DevRel, to help uh, to move that product further. You can go and talk to me after this talk. Thank you all for your attention. You are great. Build, build through the bear, build through the bull. You're amazing. I'm done. Thank you so much.